this is Brad Gates from Wild Boar Farms. Did I say that right? You did. And I have been growing his seeds for at least, what, four years now, I yeah. think. And he follows me on Instagram. What are you doing here at the Expo? Um, entertaining everything <laughs> tomato. I actually have seeds for sale. I'm displaying some of the different variations of tomatoes. Talking tomato. Um, trying to sell some cool shirts that I got here yeah. and all that. So, yeah, everything tomato. Well, tell for the audience that's not familiar with Wild Boar Farms, are you selling... Um, are you developing these varieties yourself? Yeah, so actually what I've done, I've been, over 20 years ago, I started market gardening. I started saving my own seeds. I had some accidental crosses and they tasted better than any of the 200 heirloom varieties that I'd grown. So I started saving seeds and I learned how to um, dehybridize varieties and select the best of the best out of growing thousands of plants. And I eventually ended up over 20 years, I have 60 varieties of tomatoes that I've developed. So. Did you say dehybridize? Um, well, First, when you a tomato crosses, it's technically a hybrid at first, right. and then as you dehybridize it, that makes it a uh, stable, open pollinated form. Same thing that heirlooms are. Goes back. I have yep. no idea how you do that. <laughs> well, it's just uh, growing a lot of plants, being observant, picking the right ones, oh, uh, the okay. best of the best, generation after generation. So you basically you're working your way back. Yeah, yeah. When it starts off, two tomatoes can cross. You can get dozens of different variants, uh, shapes, sizes, That's everything true, else. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting, say, uh, cross these two tomatoes. Hold it up a little higher so the camera can so see. So say if you cross these two tomatoes, you might not know, maybe this has a red beefsteak relative, maybe mm -hmm. this has a yellow cherry tomato relative, or okay. any of these things. So when you cross them the first year, it's an F1, they'll all come out the same. The next I wondered year, what F1 okay, means. Yes, yeah, first generation. <laughs> okay. The next year is when it actually gets exciting. They start expressing uh, genes from within these, genes that have maybe run from their grandparents and stuff like that. And so that's when you get all these shapes, sizes, textures, and flavors. So then it's your job to go out and find those miracle one of a kind and select the seeds and then grow a bunch the next year and, and do that for five to seven years. And how and, long have you been doing this? Uh, a little over 20 years. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And your seeds are available? Um, on my website, wildboarfarms.com. Okay. Yep, best place to get them. All right, <laughs> sounds great. Thank you. Great talking it's great to meet you finally. Yep. <laughs> I am at the Redwood Seeds booth and I took the, uh, what kind of challenge was it? Well, I took the seed challenge. If you guessed nine out of 11 seeds, you got a free pack of seeds, and I got a free pack of seeds. I guess I know my seeds. <laughs> I got stumped on uh, Orac. Orac and uh, purple fava beans. Okay, my name's Lee James, and our farm is called Tierra Vegetables. And what all do you grow? Everything from asparagus to zucchini. Wow, and what do you offer to sell? Is that seeds? Uh, no, we, I mean, we sell beans are seeds, we sell beans to eat, and here at the fair we're selling them as seed. So you have Just, a market? We have a farm stand at the field and we go to farmers markets. Wonderful. Yeah. Tell me about these four varieties of beans I picked out. Anasazi and Riozape are the um, ones that came from the Four Corners ancient people. Apparently they dug them up out of those dry caves, you know. They were there for a long time. <laughs> um, they're very good, very flavorful, not commercial varieties, home garden varieties. They don't produce well enough for commercial varieties, but they're very flavorful. And what about the Hutterite? Hutterite is one that is a, a soup bean. It breaks down to really soft, chowder style, um, and it apparently came from the um, Hutterite religious community. Um, to New Mexico again, that's a bee bean area a lot of beans developed there but not the yellow eye that's a new england boston baked bean oh i can't wait to try yeah. that and it's interesting if you can can you see the color on here these things if you think of a bean pot that's what they yeah if you think of a ceramic bean pot it's glazed with these colors wow you know, have cream bottom and a gold rim oh beautiful 
And uh, can I grow those now? I mean, we're, we're in the beginning of September. I'm in no, LA. You, you, no, anywhere you would seed them in the spring. Some seeding, some spring seedings are like in February and some are in May. So, okay. no, you, they grow. Now, it would no. Not be a good idea. No. Okay. They grow over the summer and they harvest in the fall. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Rosalia, my name. Magdalena. Are you, are you related? No, just no. we work together. Friends? Okay. Or family? No, friends and also we work together. Work together? Yeah. Where are you working? Are you working at the no. festival? We are working, we are, in, we are from Guatemala and also we are working there. Ah. Oh. Yeah, we have an association. Association? Yeah, working with the native seeds. And That's wonderful. Do you yeah. have a booth here? Yeah, at the, where is 74. Your booth? 74, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, see you. bye.